pure, authentic conversation. That's Soulfully Casual. So grab your favorite beverage, sit in your favorite chair. Here is your host, Matty Ice. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Soulfully Casual podcast hosted by Matty Ice. This is a Matty Ice Media produ- production. I can't even get that. Matty Ice Media Network production. I am your host, Matty Ice. If you are a first time listener, thank you for listening. If not, Welcome back. First things first, a little bit of business to get out of the way. Uh, if you want to connect with the show, Instagram, Soulfully Casual Podcast is the handle. If you want to find me on Twitter, the handle is at Matty Ice Media. And of course, MattyIceMedia.com for all of the other podcasts that we support, including the manual and political football with some of my friends and family members here at the Matty Ice Media Network. So it's Thursday again, and that means it's time for the Thankful series. And I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about this week because I think it's interesting, and this is me off the cuff, right? Normally, to peek behind the curtain a little bit of the show or in the shows that I do, I generally have an idea of what I'd like to do every episode. I have some kind of a write-up, maybe an outline, and I don't really try to overscript it because I think being off the cuff or as close to off the cuff as I can be is really the most genuine and authentic way to come at this, which is the whole point of the show, right? But it sometimes can be very difficult to do that because you can lose your train of thought and do you know what you want to talk about because you don't want to be rambling and have your audience be like, where the hell is this going? And I thought about last week's episode, which talked about friendship. And I was really happy with that episode, truth be told, because it made me think about all of the people in my life that have come and gone, the people that have stayed, and honestly, the ways that things have changed and evolved. And I think change can be scary for a lot of people. But when I thought about friendship and I talked about the different levels of friendship and I talked about the different reasons for friendship, that sometimes friends come in and out of your life for a reason. They serve a specific purpose that you need at that particular moment. I'm a huge advocate of things happen for a reason. And so when I was thinking about how that related to some things that I'm thankful for, I kept gravitating toward this idea of friends. And it's like, well, what else am I thankful for? Why is it so difficult to think about what I'm thankful for? So I went back and listened to the other episode and talked and listened to some of the things that I talked about. And something stuck out to me that actually relates to something that I'm thankful for this week. And I talked about how our perceptions change, right? Our viewpoints change as we get older. As we absorb more life experience, we generally tend to have different opinions and sort of better formulate, I guess, our opinions on how we want to live this life and what we are seeing around us. And that got me to realizing something that I'm very, very thankful for. And that is the uh, concept of change. I think so often when we as humans look at change, we're so scared by it because I think it's human nature and maybe this is not clinically proven, but I do think that it is human nature to sort of be comfortable in things that are comfortable, if that makes sense. I'm using the same word twice, but I think you understand what I mean. I'm going to use my father as an example. And now granted, this is not a negative example, but I think it's an example that is speaking to what I'm trying to relate to you. So my father is somebody who grew up in the same town and is continuing to live in that same town. In between being born and now, he has lived in other places and he has seen the world. But ultimately, his cocoon is in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. And right now at his age, the proposition of leaving, the proposition of changing locations or really changing anything about what has become normal in his life is ridiculously scary to him. Some of that is obviously older age and being set in your ways. And I think that that generally tends to happen to us as we get older. But some of it is the fact that he is averse to change. He is not somebody who embraces what he is comfortable with changing. And I think that's a vast majority of us. And when I think about change, I've looked at it through the entirety of my life. I'm going to be 40 in 2023. And that's not that far along, you know, that far away from here. And I looked at myself, how have I changed? What has changed for me over the years? And when I really took a personal inventory of all the things that have changed in my life, it was, I don't know, it was inspiring to me about everything that has changed, good and bad, and what has turned into the person that I am today. And I think that's why that I'm thankful. So let's take a look at some things that maybe have changed for us in society and how that relates to me. Well, first of all, obviously from a societal perspective, I think that we have become more aware of the way that society can influence us as human beings. And I say that in a positive and a negative way. I think sometimes when we look at the way society treats us, we think of it in the negative, like you know, racism, of course, sexism, things like this. And those things do exist, they're true and real. 
and we need to understand how they do affect society because I think it's important in our journey as human beings to striving to be better human beings. But there's many ways in which we are positively influenced as well and how change, you know, how, how society has changed for the better, uh, being more of an advocate for mental health, being more of an advocate for sort of self care, right? And self love, like so often in the past, we would look at somebody who needed a therapist and say, well, they're loony, they're crazy, it'd be a taboo, right? Or somebody who was fat was fat shamed. And while we do see some of that today, we have better embraced the idea that everybody is different. So I think about perspectives that change. And I love that that word perspective because I think it's so important. One of the things that seems to be the hardest thing to do for a lot of people is introspection, right? It's looking in the mirror. That's another way to describe looking in the mirror. And it's like, are people comfortable looking at themselves in the mirror? It's one of the most fundamental questions that we ask ourselves because I think that's how we gauge whether what we are doing in life is actually the right thing to do. And we can say one thing to somebody else. So you can tell people, yeah, I'm totally confident in who I am. But when you go home and you have that moment and you look at yourself and you think, I don't like this person. That's happened to me many times over the years. Hell, it happened to me today when I'm looking at myself having gained all this weight and I'm like, I look like shit, pardon my language. And it is what it is. But that's another thing too, right? Change. How have I changed my perceptions on how my life is, is, is live, right? So long, I didn't care about exercise. Now it's something that's paramount in my life. Now it's something that I have to do. And when I don't do it for an extended period of time, I feel depressed and I don't like who I am. That's a change that has happened, right? Uh, other changes that have happened, my living situation, my life situation, going from being somebody who was out and about a social butterfly to being a homebody. That's a change that I have embraced because I think it's a natural change as you get older, start a family and other such things, right? Your lives, your life sort of changes a little bit and you need to be adaptable. Other things that have changed, society has changed around us. Like long gone are the days in which we could sort of blissfully be ignorant to society anymore to the point that you, you are just, it's so hard to not recognize things that happen around you, the way that drivers have changed, right? The way that store etiquette has changed, the way that phones and social media have changed our social interactions. And again, there's a lot of good changes that have come from it, but it's so difficult to, to be ignorantly blissful to all the ways in which the changes around us aren't affecting our everyday lives and our interactions with other people. Like it's crazy sometimes to think about. And then other things that have changed too are, you know, ourselves. And that's the biggest change, right? How have we changed? So I like to think of myself at age 10. What was I into at age 10? I was probably still into Power Rangers. Uh, I was probably still somewhat of a mama's boy, right? 10 years old, you kind of start to think that you're a little bit independent. You really don't know what independence is. You're still a kid. You're still also thinking about being older, not an adult, but being older. And you're really towing that line of what does it mean to be a kid and, and what does it mean to want to be older? And then what was I like at 20? Oh my God, uh, 20, I thought I knew everything and I didn't. Uh, I thought that I was invincible, I wasn't. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And the reason I didn't, want to, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life is because I didn't know who I was. Age 20 is such a weird thing. Like when you think about your 20s, I think about everything that went on in my 20s and how much of it I enjoyed and then how much of it I didn't enjoy because not being confident in myself was something that really held back from the enjoyment of life. So I was 20, young, immature, finding myself. Where was I at 30? Not that far from where I was at 20 outside of the fact that I had nearly died from a heart attack, had become a marathon runner, still wasn't confident in myself. And it was age 30 that I met my wife. And that's a crux of, you know, that's like a, a space time continuum moment for me because it's like, okay, I finally started to put some things together. And at age 30, I was still kind of getting there. And it's like, you know, we think of age 30 as, oh God, we're not in our 20s anymore. And then, oh, we get to 40 and man, we're old, we're ancient and it's horseshit. It's not the way that it is. And then I think to myself, what will I be at 40? Well, I don't think I'll be that fundamentally different from the way I am today. And I think that the way that I am today, the person that I am today is almost the maximum person that I could be. And it's the best feeling in the world. I absolutely love it. And it's a change that I've embraced, right? Being able to change my perceptions, change who I am, change my philosophies and meaningfully change them. Not just say, yeah, I'm a different person. 
I actually have. When I look at myself in the mirror, I recognize the changes in front of me. And I also recognize in the ways in which I have allowed that change to be embraced, right? To actually be meaningfully accepted to the point that it gets implemented. And I don't think that that's an easy thing to do. And I think the concept of change has actually been a blessing for me because it has allowed me to be more comfortable with myself. It's allowed me to look at all the things that happen that I can't control and decide how to go with the flow. I'm not perfect at it. There's a lot of times when I'm actually really crappy at it. Like today when I dropped a piece of pizza on the ground for my son and I had a little bit of a meltdown and it's like, why are you having such a meltdown? Like you dropped it, you can't change it, move on. But I think change in general is a scary for a lot of people. It's very, very scary for a lot of people. And I think what we have seen is these changes in society have caused an even more of adverse effect to change. It's like, you know, we, we generally want things to stay the same all the time. But really when we stagnate is when we generally tend to atrophy. And I don't think that that's something that we should be you know, wanting, right? But change too can apply to friends. And I think that that is where the connection is between friends and this episode much of what our friendship cycles look like or i guess the arc of our friendships are dictated by is how we change as individuals of course but how others change right like how many friends can you think about that changed so dramatically that you became separate individuals to the point that you grew apart it happens all the time right and that's not necessarily a bad thing but it's sometimes it's hard to embrace because I think what we end up finding is like, oh, that person is, they're not my friend anymore. They never call, they never write, all that good stuff. And really the, the reality of it is their lives have changed. I've had a few friends who you know, told me that I was a different person than the person that they met. Well, the person that they met was single, fat, and completely uninspired in life. And then the person that they knew then was married, uh, on the verge of having a child and still not a podcaster yet, but getting closer to that goal. Those are two completely different people. And that person had not embraced change. They were so afraid of change that they hadn't actually changed themselves. And it took a long time for them to get there. And I think that that freedom that is given to us by change and the ability to, to change anything is really, really powerful. And I think it allows us to change the perceptions. And I, th I said that perception was important. And the reason why it is important is because that's the only way that we can really evolve with the world around us. Our perceptions are very much dictated by our worldview, which are very much dictated by the life experiences that we have. So for instance, if you've always lived in the same town and always lived either near or you know, with your parents, right, your worldview might be a little bit different. You might feel safer in a smaller community and maybe a larger community like a big city or moving somewhere else is scary. And I think that that's very, very natural. If your life situation has been like mine, where you lived in the same town for your childhood, but moved and never went back and you've been in other places, then perhaps it's a little bit more comfortable for you to be in any setting right and that's where the idea of perception comes along but i think what is important is that the way that perception and change meet in our venn diagram is that we as human beings have the freedom and flexibility to change that perception anytime that we want and that's really the true power and you can even look at it in this pandemic right the perception that the vaccine is a bad thing there's many people that are choosing to believe that. They're choosing to have that perception for whatever reason it is. And again, I'm not here to tell you whether you should get it or not. I'm just here to point out that there are people whose perceptions are one thing. And what we know is that perception in a lot of cases is reality. If you perceive something is true, you're gonna think it's the truth, even if it's not. And we have the ability to change that. And what I have seen in the people around me and the communities around me is that there are people who may have believed something a long time ago or even as recent as before the election and they have actively made a change in their life to change that perception or to at least embrace the idea that perhaps their perception of life and the world isn't the only perception that's out there that somebody else's perception of the world somebody else's you know perceived reality may be just as valid as theirs and maybe maybe there is a happy medium between the two and that's where I've come to in my life. I have many friends that run the gamut of political views, of science views, whatever you wanna call it. And you know what? I think what we have learned is to respect each other and we respect each other's lives and the choices that we make. And I never wanna judge anybody for what they do. I can make choices in my life that are my choices to make. Like I can choose to only see people who are vaccinated. That's a choice I'm allowed to make. 
It's not a choice that I'm telling anybody else that they should be making. It's just the choice that I have decided to choose, right? Because my perception is that that's the best thing for me and my family. Somebody else's perception is that something else is better for them and their family. And those two things don't always have to align. But again, having the freedom to be able to change it and to be able to change it through dialogue and talk, I think is really, really powerful. And that's where this show has really come in for me. I think the first year of the show was me really getting out a lot of frustrations about what I was seeing in the world. And I said at episode 100 that I wanted to take a new direction. I wanted the show to be what it was originally intended to be. And that's another thing. This show can change any time that it wants. I'm not saying that I'm going to change it, but I'm saying the freedom, the creative freedom is awesome. And I love it. And it's all because things change. Things evolve all the time. And it's a wonderful thing. And if it, I don't know, like if I never changed at all throughout my entire life, I'd be one of the most boring people out there. And this life would be one of the most boring existences out there. And I don't want that. I want to be able to be open to changing my perceptions to meet people from other backgrounds, to consider viewpoints that maybe I haven't before. And again, considering doesn't mean accepting, but considering is really, really important. I don't think we do enough of the considering part. And that change, that idea of change and perception, they go hand in hand together. And we need to be more open to it because the world is ever changing around us. And if we constantly believe that our perception is the only one that is credible, it's going to end up in so much more division than we ever thought we ever had. We thought the world was divided before, it's gonna get even worse. We don't need that. We need more unity. So consider changing, right? Consider a way in which you can embrace change. And it doesn't have to be big. Shit, maybe you get no pulp in your orange juice as opposed to pulp. Like it doesn't have to be a life-changing, altering experience. But you know what? If you are used to drinking orange juice with pulp and somebody buys the no pulp and you drink it and your life doesn't end, well, then you know that you're capable of embracing change. And perhaps, just perhaps, that can actually extrapolate to something larger. It's just a thought and I think it is worth worth noting. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful for the changes that I've made in my life. I'm very thankful for the opportunities in which the change that I can't control has allowed me to adapt and allowed me to grow. And it's just something that I'm thankful for because I think it happens so often that we don't really understand the influence that it has on us throughout the entirety of our lives. That when things change around us, they change so often, so quickly, and a lot of times so unnoticeable that we just sort of take them for granted. We're always looking for the big thing, the big sign that's going to tell us what is gonna happen in our lives. But honestly, those signs happen day in and day out when things change around us. And it's how I've been able to adapt that is something that I'm very, very happy about in my life. And so I'm very, very thankful for it. As always, I'm thankful for everybody who listens to the show that it will never change. Um, I love doing the show, I love podcasting. And you know, I mentioned, I think uh, in this week's episode or maybe last week that there were some big things happening on the horizon that it was time to take the the baby show that is Soulfully Casual and other shows on Matty Ice Media and kind of take them to the big leagues, take them to the, the next step, so to speak. Uh, we had the Define the Relationship talk and the Matty Ice Media family is ready uh, to make these shows more professional, but continuing to engage and be authentic. And that's always what I'm gonna strive for, especially on this show. And so I hope to continue to reward your listening ear with more and more genuine and authentic con, uh, you know, content. And again, we're gonna be changing. The perception of the show is gonna to continue to change because I'm not just paying lip service to what I'm thankful for. I'm living it and I'm embodying it as often as I can. So I appreciate you listening this week. Um, I appreciate you just sort of letting me go off the cuff and ramble. I think it was a good, you know, good time. How have you changed? What are some things in your life that have changed for both the positive and the negative? Hit me up on the ways that I mentioned earlier, Instagram, Twitter, the website. I'd love to hear your story because I think there's a lot of Uh, changes that take place in people's lives that maybe go unnoticed, but maybe can inspire somebody else. And maybe we can forge a true genuine connection point between us. So uh, make sure to stay safe out there. Of course, hug your loved ones, folks. I say it every episode. I'll continue to say it every episode. And I'll continue to remind you that I'm going to say it because we don't get that much time with them. So change something about a relationship because you may not have more time with them. And it's important to have as many positive memories as we can with people. So Take care. I'll talk to you next week. Peace. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on the Soulfully Casual podcast are those of Matty Ice and not necessarily those of the Matty Ice Media Network. 
the Soulfully Casual podcast is exclusively owned by Matty Ice and is brought to you by the Matty Ice Media Network. <laughs>